Hello everyone, Anthony here for another episode of the Let's Talk Resident Evil podcast, and this was a really fun one, having Richard back, being able to talk about all the stuff uh, since he's been away, Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil Vendetta, and the final chapter, a pretty packed episode with covering all the news, also answered some fan questions that we got on Facebook and Twitter, um, and it was a lot of fun. So you're definitely going to enjoy this one. I would also like to thank everyone who participated in the fan art contest. It was a lot of fun. I want to also thank Jeffrey for helping out the page, helping out the contest, pushing it, making posts um, when I couldn't. And he helped organize this thing. So shout out to you, man. Uh, you really are a lifesaver with like, you know, posting and, and staying on everything. Uh, stuff that I'm terrible at. But he helped put it together and we got a really awesome amount of entries so the fact that we even got some was really cool and we got some people um, engaged in the community now uh, you're going to see them uh, pop up throughout the video so to show all of them and to shed some light on the art that was made to give it its proper attention and stuff for everyone to see for the masses we're going to throw it in the video so that's what you're going to see but we also have a special song that we're going to be having on today's intro for this podcast it is from a band called The Virus Within, and this song is called Outbreak. Now, this is JJ's band, actually. JJ is the singer. He's been working really hard on this band. I want to throw out that this song is a rough demo, okay? This is from a practice of theirs. They're still getting, a, they're recording um, a lot of studio stuff, or they're working on stuff. They recently played their first show, and I told them, hey, you know what? I'll throw a song in on the podcast, but I figured I'd put it as the intro or I put at least some of the song as the intro as it fades into us talking. It is metal. It is fucking heavy. So if you don't like screaming and stuff, you might not like the actual song <laughs> or or whatever. But I don't care. I fucking love it. It's awesome. It's hard. It's it's heavy. The breakdown at the end's awesome. So go check it out. Um, their page. It's the virus within. The Facebook page is going to be down below in the description. But that's it. So enjoy this episode of the Let's Talk Resident Evil podcast. I want to thank all of you guys for participating. It is Resident Evil 7 Eve, so we're going to be back with another episode after this one, after RE7, after we've digested it and everything, and we'll be able to come on here and talk about it. So stay tuned for that. Enjoy. This is The Virus Within with Outbreak. <laughs> And welcome to another episode of the Let's Talk Resident Evil podcast. And this time, I am a little sick. I uh, came back from vacation in Florida, and I think the weather does not uh, agree with me right now. So if I sound a little stuffy or whatever, it's because of that. So I'm trying my best to, you know, sound sound okay because I was losing my voice the other day. So but anyway... I am finally back on here, and it's been a while. I don't really know how long it's been, to be honest, but it's been a long time since he's been on, but I'm here with Richard. Hello, everyone. And he's came back on hiatus and recently started putting up uh, Let's Plays as well. So um, I asked him if he wanted to do a show, and uh, it was t the time was right. Time is right. There's a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Yeah, so that's why I think it's a good uh, opportunity to bring up, um, you know, kind of the the main stuff that's been going on. So we're going to talk about Resident Evil 7. We're going to talk about uh, Vendetta. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about the final chapter, live action final movie. Uh, all of these are on the horizon. Um, when does Vendetta come out? Uh, it comes out in May and January. 
Or, right, it actually wow. doesn't come out before <laughs> Not Jan. Comes Wait. out in May and January. <laughs> oh, <laughs> June? Sense. Did you say May, May January? <laughs> no. <laughs> Somewhere comes... between May and January. <laughs> no, no, I said it comes out in May and January, and then I realized that's not the word I wanted to say. Oh, uh, okay. So I May say, and June. No, I, wa- I meant to say another word that starts with J, Japan. Oh, May so, in Japan. It comes out in May in Japan. Yeah. Let's see if it has like a US release. Yeah, let's double check that. I don't think it did have. Yeah, a... it, it says May 27th in Japan, but nothing. Yeah. Saying it takes place after 6, before 7. Okay, so. Well, May and January, that's, uh, that's when it comes okay, out. Okay, so we do have a lot of Resident Evil stuff this year, hopefully with a Resident <laughs> Evil 2 remake trailer of some sort. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so. But you know what it is, Richard? This, mm. I think. I might mm-hmm. be I might be wrong. I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. check this right now. What's because up? Yep. Considering it is January, I know that we mm-hmm. we happen to start this. We started this uh, January twenty thirteen, I think. Was it January or was it February? It might have been February, but I'm gonna check. Might have been at the tail end of January. I think it was when Dead Space Three came out. Remember that. Yeah, it was that was February, but we might have been we might have done it a bit sooner than that. Let's see when was this episode? February second. Okay, so we're close. We're okay. close to have been doing this for. Uh, I can do bath right now. It's four. We'll years. just say yeah, four years. Four years of podcasting. To How does that make community. you feel, Anthony? That's it's a hell of an accomplishment. We uh, mm-hmm. we've gotten a lot of. Of fans just from the show alone and it's given me some great opportunities to go on some different shows to meet some different people uh and everyone's always had a good time someone was like you should release a box set of all of these so and i was like um i don't know <laughs> if i could do that but <laughs> uh maybe one day i don't know uh we're, this is episode 25 so you know we've done 20 this is the 25th episode of talking about a series wow. that we both enjoy um I just can't believe it's already been four years. It doesn't feel that long. Uh, you know, our, we've gotten a lot better equipment. Our s- stuff sounds a lot more nicer now, more slick, not as uh, compressed and shit. So I pay, pay more attention to the audio now. So I think I've at least grown in that sense where the production has gone up a little bit. Um, yeah. Trying to, you know, just do the best I can with uh, editing. But, you know, I, yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, it really has been. Every single time I, you know, do one of these episodes, I can't believe that, you know, it gets a, a good response from people and people are still liking to listen to it as much as they do. Uh, every, surreal, every episode like, gets over a thousand hits, you know, and it's pretty crazy. It's surreal going back to those older episodes and like if you skip through the podcasts we're talking about like what do you think Resident Evil Six is going to be like? Well, I think it's going to be like yeah. No, that, does, that doesn't make sense because we started doing it after Resident Evil Six, but we would talk about things that haven't hadn't been released yet at the time. Yeah, it's like a snapshot of that time period. Yeah, so it's like we're talking about like is, older right? Resident Evil topics and you know older controversy and when like just, we didn't know what was going on with the series if Capcom was going to yeah. reboot it. Yeah, all the we, important at one point things. there was like. It's like, are they going to remake Resident Evil into an open world game? And it's like, well, that obviously never happened. But at the time, we didn't know. Yeah, I, it's we're just kind of getting the news like as it was coming out. And that's the thing that I like about you know doing these in general is also discussing it with other people and getting different opinions. Like, um, you know, the highest downloaded episode that we had was episode twenty three. It has four hundred eighty six downloads. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, was that an episode you did with John? It was JJ Diamond. Oh, JJ. Okay. Yeah, uh, the one I did with Diamond was before that, but they did well too. Um, they were in the hundreds. It was two hundred and ten, and then it was yeah nice. one eighty one. So very it, nice. Yeah, so those are good numbers. Like people are listening to these on the go, uh, and just kind of listening to them to have them forever, just to download them for free. So you could still download this episode uh if you go to the media fire link down below you can download 
Let's Talk Resident Evil uh, for free. And you can download it, put it on your iPod, put it on your computer, iPhone, iPod. I'm so, I sound so old. iPod, your iPod. <laughs> I never thought I'd be a part where I saying iPod would sound old, but it is. Put it, on your C- put it on one of those CD players. Yeah, put it on one of those things. Uh, yeah. Put it on a print. It, put it on a CD. Put on a CDR. Uh, put it in your car. CDR that you probably can't. Listen fit to anyway. the podcasts. Listen to the podcasts on your Walkman. Yeah, on your Walkman. Uh, with those dinky little headphones. And uh, no. Um. Yeah. So download it on Media Fire. You can also please join the page. Let's talk Resident Evil on Facebook. Join the page where you can discuss Resident Evil. We have fun stuff. We recently did an art contest that finished up, and we're picking a winner for that. And we're going to announce that soon. So we're doing a lot of fun stuff. So come over and join the page and also download it on Media Fire so you can get that MP3. And uh, yeah, so let's start off with the obvious question is, and I know you did a video on it. And some of you who haven't seen uh, the video that Richard has done on it, he did it. Uh, was it back in the summer? It was back in the summer. The video, unfortunately, isn't up anymore. Okay. Um, so, so that makes it even more prominent to state your opinions here. Yeah, I, I changed my name back to Biohazard um, just to let people know that Resnual content is on the way eventually when I stop being a lazy asshole and I actually make time for it. I did. I haven't got a chance to watch your Let's Play. I'll be honest. I still have to get. That's the, yeah. Uh, like I, I've like, I've had people ask me like what's the status of that i'm like hey it's done it's done i'm just i just need to get on it i just need to finish editing the parts um things are getting but i'm really happy we still you still have the spider-man ones up because those are really fun go check them out if anyone doesn't know we did a let's play on spider-man and it was a lot of fun it was it was a fun fun project to do with anthony that was one of my favorite things that we've ever done yeah no hands down i think it was great the audio was great we would send audacity files i would edit them send them to richard and it was like a very like smooth process, and with the way Richard put it together uh, was really well done. It was it was nice like he did it where each level was the length of the video. It was nice and and organized. It, it was awesome. So it was a lot of fun, and I want to do that again with Resident Evil Survivor. I kind of want to do a style like that where I play it and we split it up into like maybe three or four parts because that game's pretty quick. Yeah. But I want to do that's something be, like that. That's gonna be fun because I've never played resident evil survivor before yes, I've, yes. I've i've never seen i've seen gameplay here and there like i would type in resident evil survivor gameplay skip throughout the video and just say to myself what the fuck is this <laughs> but i've never like i've never actually played it i've never seen a full let's play on it i've never seen it in stores anywhere i have like three retro game stores by my house and i haven't seen a copy at either of those locations so uh, I look that that'll be something good for for us to do because it'll be like a new thing for me to see. Yeah, like that. That's why I always want to do. So it's on the list of stuff I want to do. I'm doing a bunch of stuff this year that I I put up on a post on the the page actually for New Year's. Um, and I'll say it here too before we get into the topic. I know I'm get going off on a tangent, but uh, you know we haven't done these in a while, so we're talking about a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna be doing a lot of like live streams of course uh, i want to do dead rising 2 uh, re7 is obviously coming out when that game comes out so stream and slash let's play uh dino crisis 2 eternal darkness um resident Evil survivor there's a lot of stuff not in that particular order but there's a lot of games that i'm going to be playing so it's going to be interesting uh mapping out the year but i like doing it in an organized way and the first thing that i wanted to do was a new show so that's what we're doing now um, but that's good that you have been, you know, doing that content uh, out. To, you have been giving that content out to people. And, uh, you know, especially when you've been absent for a while, because that was the last series we did was Let's Play. That was back. Uh, we finished that in like June, right? Summer. We finished that in June, I believe. So. Or we finished it, I think, in May, I think. And then I, you just got them up by June. So yeah, that that was yeah. a very fun process, and I want yeah. to do like I want to do Dead Space two, Dead Space three. There's a lot of stuff that you know I want to get to, that I'm starting to just now kind of, you know, do a little bit more of of the Let's Plays stuff. It's been harder to do more Let's Plays throughout each year, 
And uh, but that's good that I've seen you know you're getting back into, it, especially with Resident Evil One, Chris, which you haven't done. So yeah, I've never done it before. Uh, I've never even played through it before I did the Let's Play in full. Mm-hmm. So th- doing that Let's well, Play was my first time ever playing through the Chris scenario, and okay. it was it was fun. I like the way it turned out. Um, like I said, everything's done. You know, the footage is on my laptop. The commentary is up there. I just need to find the time to edit the parts together. Things are getting a little more hectic now because I'm starting college. So it's going to be harder to find the time to actually do that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, like part of it is motivation because sometimes you're tired and you just feel like doing other things. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can get a, get off my lazy ass and get around to doing that soon. The Survivor Let's Play, that's going to be a lot of fun to do. And Yeah, I just got to record the footage and then get it up uh, and parts and edit it. So that, that'll that probably be, I want to say maybe we can start trying to do that in like, uh, maybe like, yeah, we could maybe do around February. That seems like a nice month to, yeah. to do something like that. Yeah, it's uh, good to set well, those deadlines for yourself so you know. Yeah, if I, here's the so thing, if I don't like, set deadlines, it's not getting dumb. It's yeah. not getting dumb. Yeah, like, it's, I, it's a good I way to stay about, motivated. Yeah, I realized about that, uh, you know, with, um, I realized all that shit with, like, just trying to see what can get done in in an easier time frame, because if you're so strapped on time, you're like, okay, well, how long does it take to, like, record this and edit a bunch of these, like, in a row, or streaming, and I like streaming because it archives right to YouTube, and I don't have to edit anything, and that's always nice, you know, it's a little, it gives me a little break, <laughs> Especially, you know, since I have to get a new hard drive for my computer, which I'm doing this week. So I'm putting a new two terabyte in here. Very uh, nice. My old, you know, hard drive is starting to go. So it's been a few years. So all the rendering and stuff has taken a toll. I just purchased an external hard drive. Nice. Yeah, I got a two terabyte one a few months ago and I've been backing up all the stuff on there. All the podcast stuff, all the Resident Evil stuff uh, that I've been doing, all the projects. So, yeah, it's uh, that's awesome. But... To get back, just to, to swing things back onto what I was going to ask you. So since that video is gone, uh, you should just give your thoughts. Now, have you played the Resident Evil 7 demo, all the updates? Have you played all of the updates? Or have you just played the first edition? I have played all of the updates. Yeah, I've played all the updates. Okay, good. So in seeing this uh, kind of you know take life, the, it's it's come out now. It's, you know, it's one of those things where it's, it's been uh, judged in many different ways, uh, mm-hmm. especially with the demos and the trailers. So we're going to get into a lot more, of course, in this topic, but what is your overall thoughts of RE7? Like when you first saw that trailer, when E3, I think it was around E3, right? E3 mm-hmm. happened and Capcom showed that trailer, which didn't look like a Resident Evil game at all. Uh so what were your initial thoughts going into that, seeing that? Okay, so uh, my general opinion of Resident Evil 7, like I stated in the video that I did a while ago, um, my opinions from that video still stand. I took it down for personal reasons. Um, but I'm basically just going to give you the opinion that I gave in that. Yeah, just because I know a lot of people haven't seen it. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. You can, um, you can say it. Have phrase it however the you know way you want because I know sometimes you can get oh because I've talked about RE7 a lot on these past shows so I understand if it's kind of tiresome yeah to, you've kind of you kind of like you you pretty much like went over everything whenever RE7 yeah. received a new update or received a new trailer like you made a video about the trailer that came out or the update or whatever yeah so I've been very silent on Resident Evil 7 I've done nothing for it on my channel so sometimes i get people asking me what do you think of resident evil 7 uh and i think that resident evil 7 looks like a very good game i think it looks like a classic resident evil done for the modern age i think it has a lot of classic resident evil elements to it and overall i i can say that i'm looking forward to it coming out which is something that I haven't felt for a video game in a long time. I agree. I, I don't... 
I mean, things have changed. I don't usually play video games that often anymore. I just, you know, something happened where that spark just kind of died out. Um, and seeing all the trailers for Resident Evil 7, you know, reading about all the updates, seeing the response from people, seeing, you know, what Capcom has to say about it, it's getting me kind of excited for Resident Evil 7. Um, I am very excited. So, yeah, it, it looks really good. That's the general, my general thoughts on it. It looks good. Now, what are your thoughts on the uh, the demo? Uh, playing the demo, actually playing the somewhat of the... And now, I know it's not going to be like the overall game, but it gives, it's giving you a general idea. Like, what were your thoughts of some of the <laughs> gameplay elements that you experienced? Okay, so... Um, I guess to answer one of your earlier questions that I just didn't, uh, my, my reaction to RE7, like, the E3 reveal... Hmm. Because uh, the E3 reveal and the demo kind of went hand in hand because they released yeah, it within a few hours, yeah. so it was like, holy shit! Like, and there's a demo. Like, and there's a demo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought it looked interesting. I genuinely, or I generally don't get too excited for things based on trailers. Yeah, generally, same. I generally like if something is announced, and they showcase. A little bit of gameplay, or they announce a new title without showing anything. I don't really get excited. Um, so when they announced Story Seven, I was like, "Oh, that's that's interesting." I'm neutral. Um, at this point in time, I'm more excited for Resident Evil Seven because they've continued to update. You know, they've continued to update the demo, but they've also continued to show new things leading up to the release of Story Seven. A lot, which is a, yeah. It's a good way to generate hype. It's smart because they keep they keep you interested by doing that. It's pretty highly anticipated, more so than RE6, I think. The RE6 was very successful, so I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Um I think the demo was very good. It was very good. I I know some people didn't like it. Some people think that it's too PT. Much of a... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It. <laughs> um. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Resume. <laughs> 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 It's like hard to laugh because I'm sick and I start coughing, but this is fucking hilarious. Uh, look, it's not I'm, like PT at all. That's uh, look. If something is first person and like a psychological, look, I I guarantee you this is being developed around the same time. Did they take influence of PT of releasing a trailer, possibly like playing it? I guess, but. Even PT didn't do constant updates and constant clues and kept people guessing. It kept people guessing about the overall product because it had it, there was a finish to it. The demo didn't really have an ending until the final update, so it kept people in suspense. And there's different elements to that game that were not in PT. And you know, I, I think I think yeah, inspiration, inspiration, but people were like PT. saying that oh, because when people say it's like PT. It's like they're they're saying like they're just ripping it off and they're not saying oh well they took influence they're like no nah, like they they stole it and they're not original because X Y and Z you know like you could told we should totally do a segment yeah. tonight in the like, show reading those comments on like a Resident Evil Seven video because that'd be fucking hilarious yeah <laughs> I'll I'll, I'll pull should. them up while we, we talk, talk about all this shit but um I no Res Resident Evil Seven demo. It's similar to PT in the sense that it, that Capcom updated it in this in a very cryptic way. PT was very cryptic. You, some of the things that you had to do to get the true ending in that uh, couldn't have been done unless you looked it up, you know, or unless you were the rare person who, unless you were the rare person who just stumbled on it through sheer gameplay. Um, so. I guess, like, finding the coin in the demo is similar to some aspects in PT, because you had to, like, follow the clues and point the dummy finger at certain things, and then yeah. go here, go there, 
now you're in a room there's a there's a rocking chair oh cool capcom thinks we're the greatest ever because we found the coin i think they they made the crypticness of it similar to pt but in terms of the actual gameplay and the horror of re7 it's very different it's easy to scream PT PT because it is first person. But it's like not every first person game is like PT. I don't like it's completely different in terms of atmosphere and style and and whatnot. People are thinking about Resident Evil again. Uh, yeah. It's P- PT was like successful because it was this free game. Everyone had access to it. It was scary. It was effective, and it got people excited. So Capcom took inspiration from that, and they made a demo for their horror game. They've updated the demo. You know, people can download it whenever they want, as long as they're on PS4. I'm not sure if it's on Xbox One at this point. Um, yeah, the demo is on everything now. Okay, so it point is it got people excited. That that's where the similarities with PT end. I know that both of them have ghosts, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Like it's every a lot of things have ghosts in them. The ghost in PT is completely different than the ghost in Resident Evil Seven. It's just I don't know, man. It's one of those things like <clears throat> you can't. I think at the end of the day, like, you're not gonna please everyone, but people gotta wait for the game to come out. They do. You know what I mean? It really just comes down to just playing it, because it could be really good. I mean, it just looks like they're, they're, you know, people are interested in this game, they don't know what it's gonna be like, and that's very smart, because people are gonna check it out, and... Yeah, I'm gonna go to the midnight launch if there is one. I'm gonna I'm requesting off from work and I'm going. So there you go, treating it like an event. Yes, and then I'm gonna stream it. Let's play it just right out of the gate and just do it. Just chill with it and hang out with people and play it for fun and archive it and so people can watch me experience it for the first time. A blind run, if they that's what the kids call it these days. So. Let's blind run Resident Evil Seven. Yeah, pretty much. It's just uh, it's gonna be a first time thing, and so it's gonna be cool. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, when it comes out, so like when you played the uh, when you did the puzzles and stuff, uh, did you feel like it kind of had a nice feel to it, uh, despite it being first person and moving it around? F- and it felt like a first person Resident Evil. Yeah. That's honestly what it felt like. Um, it's easy for people to say it's not like Resident Evil because of the camera perspective. But with that in mind, it, the core elements are still the same. You're exploring a creepy area. There's puzzles. You solve the puzzles. You get keys or an item that acts and does the same job as a key. Yeah. Then you use that key on a door, and you access a new area. Then you backtrack, you find something else for the new area, you know, it's... It's very Resident Evil without people... People realize how much of Resident Evil it is when they kind of actually pay attention to it and stop complaining about it, you know, the people that are complaining, you know. There's an inventory system. Mm -hmm. You can examine items in three dimensions. You can... uh, combine items There's discard them herbs, apparently or yep yep yeah. they they're going to have herbs um which is cool because they added little animations so in the trailer he combines an herb and then he pours alcohol all over his arm to heal his wound mm-hmm. um there's a handgun handgun ammo shotgun melee weapon Shotgun, yeah. They released a trailer where he picks up a shotgun and he cocks it. Um, I, I mean, yeah, it just, it looks, that's why I did a Halloween special. Like, so I was just like, let me just do a video constructing kind of how I feel about everything. 
you know, that I've just been seeing, and uh, it's got me really excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what uh, what do you feel? How do you feel about being uh, the character Ethan? I am very intrigued by it because I know that you you uh, you know you care about a lot of, of characters and um, when they're new, like you know, I know you pay attention to that just like I do, especially mm-hmm. how characters are written. And how yeah. they are portrayed with the with the story. So I feel like it'll I'll be it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to hear your opinion on the character of Ethan because we're all going to experience it the same way. But we got to see how they incorporate his character and the Bakers and everything uh, in this story that's supposed to be our Resident Evil universe that's been existing for twenty years now. You know, going forward. Yeah. Um. So Ethan is interesting to me because he lost his wife. And I think, I don't know about everyone else, for me personally, having a character who has lost someone important to them uh, creates a good way to generate sympathy. So knowing that he's already lost his wife at the beginning of the game and knowing that he's going to this mansion in the bayou to look for his dead wife has me very interested Um, because it's kind of tragic in a way you know you can easily put yourself in that kind of situation if you've had someone special in your life yeah exactly and yeah and you just imagine like oh shit like i wouldn't even know how how to feel if i lost my wife or my girlfriend well he's like searching for her Yeah. yeah yeah he received he received some kind of voice message from her which makes it interesting because is this a supernatural thing that's going on? Is he crazy? What's going on? Is she still alive? A lot of people have drawn up comparisons to Silent Hill 2. It is very similar. It, it is. That that premise is, yeah, it's very similar. I, I wouldn't... When I watched the trailer, I didn't think of Silent Hill 2. Yeah, neither did I. Yeah. It wasn't until I read the comments where, like, Everyone was saying, oh, it ripped off Silent Hill 2. Even like, I think that's just because one guy uh, wrote Silent Hill 2 and then everyone else decided to copy and paste that. I didn't get a Silent Hill 2 vibe from this. And I don't think Silent Hill 2 is the first thing ever to create a protagonist with a dead wife. It's a, it's, it's a trope, but it's an effective trope if you know how to do it correctly. Character with a dead loved one. Um, so I'm interested in seeing Ethan's story and all this, like, okay, who's the wife? Um, why, why is she over there? You know, why did she go out there in the first place? Yeah. In the trailer, she's like, I'm so sorry. Like, I know I shouldn't have lied to you or whatever. I think she's, she said, I'm paraphrasing. She said something along those lines. And then she's like, but don't come here. And it's like, okay, did Ethan's wife do something? And then warning him not to go there. But then it's like, you know. like, did, But did she do something? She's supposedly being, she's missing. So it's like, okay, so is he just trying to, does he know why she's missing? Does he know if she like went up there without like, you know, anybody knowing? And then she's also yeah. just getting these messages saying, well, don't go like, there. Wh- why is she apologizing? Like, did she do something to Ethan? Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of shit that we got to figure out. Yeah, the the mansion um, is a very familiar setting. I like how you're exp- it's familiar, but it's new. I like how Ethan is not a soldier; he's just an everyman. Yeah, and not a puncher, bolding hero, as they stated. So yeah, they're... I'm sh- I'm sure they're gonna find a way to throw in umbrella elements they already have in the demo yeah that that makes me happy because i like knowing that if this is still resident evil not like i said even though they are trying to reboot it in a sense i mean just look at the title and look at the bio the biohazard it's called biohazard resident evil and resident evil biohazard so <laughs> i hate that title i just call it resident evil 7 <laughs> yeah i call it re7 yeah um Fucking assholes. <laughs> no, it looks... Okay, did people complain when 
Resident Evil 2 introduced Leon and Claire. Uh, no. Like, exactly. Like, you should expect to see new characters here and there. Yeah, exactly. This is a new, is a new Resident Evil game. How many new times generation. Can you see Leon? I love Leon. How many times do you see Chris? I love Chris. I mean, like, <laughs> you, you gotta, like, you know. It all depends on the story that Capcom is trying to tell. Let them get fucked up in the animated movies. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah. um, <laughs> no, agreed. Um, let's let them be there if that's where they have to stay because I'd rather see the game progress than just stay the same. And now that Ethan's being introduced, maybe we can see him team up with older characters that people love yeah. in a future Resident Evil game. But it's going exactly. to impact the players more because... They've played as Ethan. Now they get to see him. They're familiar with him, so now they get to see him with the other characters that we love. If they decide to do that, no, I'm I'm interested. I'm interested in the story. I want to see what happened with Ethan's wife, and I want to see what happened with the Bakers. Why is the guy so strong? The the Baker guy, like what he breaks through the wall, and he's apparently chasing it throughout the game. Yeah, he gets shot in the face, he gets up, he gets burned, he gets up. JJ commented on something that I found interesting. He said he wanted him to look more like a BOW. Mm -hmm. Um, In one of the podcasts that you do. Yeah. And I agree, but I also want to point out that this is Resident Evil, and everyone has multiple forms in Resident Evil. That is true. So maybe... Maybe in uh, by the end of the game, Mr. Baker will mutate into some disgusting monster. Which will be really cool to see. No, that will Mr. be. Mr. Baker, it's come to this. The self-destruct se- sequence has been initiated. <laughs> also, if you hear me muting my mic, it's probably because I'm trying to not sneeze into it, so... Yeah. You can just hear the click and clacking of my Yeti. I'll try to cut them out in post, but sorry, I don't want to sneeze and everything. Um, we understand. But, um, no, I mean, people at the end of the day are going to feel different about the game because it, it's definitely taking a different approach. It's a very ballsy move, it's just switching it up on people. Um, but it also could be a really good thing. And I just think that. You know, people got to give it a chance and play it, man. Got to even know what the hell it's about. You can't just look at it and be like, "Oh, it's, it's this, it's that, blah blah blah." Yeah. <laughs> but I'm actually trying to find a video that has funny comments, but I can't find them. I can't find them. I'm looking on like the popular trailers, and I can't find them. Let's see. Uh. Okay. I like how the one trailer. It's the Resident Evil 7 Biohazard Tape 3. It, uh, I lo- that's the one that establishes Ethan's wife being dead. I've, like, at the very beginning of the trailer, mm-hmm. there's, like, narration. And, and the guys are like, for three years, he believed his wife was dead. And then they start playing the Go Tell Aunt Rhody thing, mm-hmm. which is a pretty good song, I think. Yeah, it. I, I think this trailer generated the most hype within me personally. I'd, agree, I'd probably have to agree. Yeah, everything was kind of perfect, it lined up, great music. Yeah, I'm looking at comments and they uh, they're either like Silent Hill two or they're actually excited for the game. Yeah, there's a lot of more positivity this time around. Yeah, this is strange. I'm used to Resident Evil fans just it's, getting it was, upset. Everyone was upset because all the videos that we read those comments for were before all this new Resident Evil startup, if you want to call it, happened again when they started making better decisions as a company. Mm-hmm. So everyone was like, this is a Resident Evil, this is a Resident Evil. And like... When Resident Evil 6 I know what. When Resident Evil Six came out, they're like, "This is a Resident Evil. This is shit." Mm-hmm. You know, and we would read comments like that on anything they would post. So we could go to anything that's completely unrelated, 
to Resident Evil sucking, and then their comments are about how Resident Evil sucks. <laughs> you know, the, it doesn't make any sense. All the Umbrella Core videos. All the Umbrella Core videos are hilarious. I mean, anything they would do it would just bring up, you know, all the remaster videos, or like. Fuck this. I don't need to buy it again. <laughs> Already forced the, the, the cash cow. Yeah. Uh, shit like that. But yeah, it's very hard to do. A, so I'd like to do a section with the reading the comments, but I don't think we have any kind of list of comments. We'd have to click on several videos. Yeah, we'll uh, get that ready for a future video. I'm looking here, um, and it was only like an hour and a half. So, so uh, with that being said, um, you know a lot has come out. So, but the start of the year, there was you know the remasters, and then there uh, middle of the year there was kind of the announcement of of this movie. I think it was like the motorcycle thing that leaked out, and then they're like, oh, it's gonna be the next animated movie we're like oh okay so re7 is happening you know that was kind of the major thing that this movie kind of hinted towards was like okay well there's another animated movie there's got to be another sequel there has to be uh and we were right but we would find out months later um and that ended up being resident evil vendetta uh finally a trailer came out for it the first trailer um which was the one that I got a copyright strike on, and I had to email I the that. fucking anime company and tell them lift the shit. They finally did, and it was just ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. But the trailer itself was cool. I mean, it showed some cool enemies. Leon and Chris look like they're gonna be together, probably in a better way than six, um, where it was just kind of rushed. So, you know, this is kind of a uh, you know, it looks pretty promising. I, li I mean, I like the other animated movies as well. Um, I still think we should do, you know, episodes about that specifically, kind of reviewing them. But um, what did you think of the Resident Evil Vendetta trailer? I mean, a lot of these people, a lot of people listening have already heard my reaction. So I really want to see how you feel about it or that because there is two trailers now, you know, mm -hmm. before we get into that. But that also shows Rebecca and everything and a lot more action. So what are your initial thoughts on this? The first trailer was interesting because it painted Resident Evil, Resident Evil as being eerie again. It was very mysterious and dark, creepy. It had Chris Redfield, which I enjoyed seeing. I don't think he was in the last two movies. Had Leon. Leon's pretty much going to be in every animated movie, I think. And I liked how it's combining the two characters again. I want to see more dialogue between the two of them yes i want i want to know why chris is going inside of another mansion and the the second trailer that released was much better i think it was very action-packed it looked more action-packed than resident evil damnation yeah which i haven't seen damnation in a couple of years but i remember when i saw it i felt the action scenes in that were really good so I'm interested to see how they raise the bar in Vendetta and how they incorporate their action sequences with the creepy mansion setting 
why is Rebecca back? What's the story this time around? Yeah, like I'm looking forward to just like getting the Blu-ray and just you know watching it and mm-hmm. you know seeing it because the animation is always really good, you know. Um, and I'm I'm sure Vendetta will have some callbacks to Resident Evil Seven. Mm-hmm. And that Damnation definitely because if it's coming out in May, um, you know May or early January. No I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> if it's coming <laughs> no, May, out, May and January, May and January, if it's coming out then uh, everyone will kind of be able to sink their teeth into seven. So we kind of, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff to do. A lot of cool videos we can come up with talking about the movies themselves and kind of experiencing uh, everything with you guys. Because, you know, we're going to talk about it. We can kind of talk about how we feel about the animated movie when it comes out. I mean, it looks, you know, it looks really good. And when I heard they're bringing Rebecca back, I was like, yes. Only Joe was in it, though. It looks very gory too. Yeah, all about the gore um, in animated films, especially like Dead Space Downfall and stuff like that. Really good animated. The fact film. that they're animated means they can get away with a lot more. Oh yeah, so the possibilities are endless, and Resident Evil Vendetta. Um, you know, <laughs> it's it's going to be something that's going to be a nice uh, you know sequel to all the animated films that we already know and love and something that's kind of more in the more towards the older characters that we know um, like seven where it's something completely different this is kind of a sense of those older characters coming back yeah so it's gonna be really it's good gonna be like 20 years after resident evil one which is when we last saw rebecca so yeah, fucking 20 years, holy shit. She's going to be like 38, because she was 18 when the first game took place. Yeah, 97, so if this one takes place after 6, so it'd be like 2014, 2015, 6 was like 2013, 2012 was... and 2013, because it was like the month, yeah. the month gap between like, you know... After those, Jake uh, was kidnapped. Yeah, Jake was kidnapped and stuff, so... The, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to Resident Evil Resident Evil Seven it. takes place in 2017. Okay, so, so it's been some years, and you know they probably don't want to reference six anyway. So when it makes sense probably not to do that, they're just gonna try to you know get rid of it. But um, yeah. So the the overall kind of content i mean i i'm curious to see when they're gonna give us a resident Evil 2 trailer because that needs to happen they said they will show something in january that's gonna be so, amazing sometime this month i'm interested to see what the re2 remake will look like i want to know is it going to be is it going to be over the shoulder is it going to be classic is it going to be first person? Dun dun dun. Uh, dun, dun. No, they. I don't think they would ever go <laughs> they, first person. They can't do the first person. That'd be the no, biggest I think... fucking fuck you. <laughs> like, yo, you want this remake? First person. Yeah, they. For a remake, it's important to recapture the, the old feeling. So classic feels the most plausible. I don't think this is going to be a very budget-heavy game either, so they're probably able to take a few more risks. Yeah. Spend probably not going to spend that much money on it. So. Yeah, I mean it's it's going to be coming down to I think the this is the twentieth anniversary of that game. I think coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ninety-seven, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's when we'll get it. Maybe. That'd be awesome. Uh, just the content's going to keep coming, so it's, you know, they're giving us a lot of stuff to to kind of chew on as we uh, go into the future of Resident Evil, which looks pretty uh, pretty good. That's always a good thing. You know, it's one thing I remember about the shows, like I said, I always bring it up, but it's, you know, when the dry spell happened, you know, that was it. It was like they're 
nothing left in the tank. They were just like, uh, after six, people were scared. They were like, what the fuck's going to happen? <laughs> you know, so. And justifiably so, because, you know, nobody knew if the series was going to be going a reboot stage or kind of like just ignoring what just happened and Capcom's financial struggles. There's a lot of shit that catered to all the struggle that they dealt with them up until now where they're coming out on the other end and making some good stuff again, you know? Yeah, it's it's good that Capcom's making good decisions. Yeah, because it's just you know, you want to see the company do good. I'm not going to sit here and just keep calling them crap com and I hope they fail and, you know, yeah. boo, boo hoo. You know, I just can't, I can't deal with it anymore. But, yeah, yeah so Hill's dead that's, to me or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Resident Evil's dead to me and, I only know. play the first three Resident Evils and Code Veronica. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, I mean, you're going to get that no matter what. There's a lot of people that just don't understand um, you know that there's going to be people that like it no matter what and you, know, you might get mad just because those people exist but it's like come on like I don't go looking for people that hate Resident Evil and say like oh why do you hate Resident Evil like you know if people like something they'll just like it if people don't like it then you know <laughs> I, I don't know it, 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 because those are like the elitist like I only play the trilogy kind of people. And yeah. They do exist I, within, like, the haters. You know? I only watch the originals. I only play the originals. Yeah, like, it was, like, hipster mentality. Fuck progress. Yeah. No, like, um... I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't... My thing is, if you hate it so much, why are you voicing it? Yeah, or why are you watching a Resident Evil video? Or in the Resident Evil community. Because, you know, the community and fans have played mostly all of them. Yeah. And, you know, so it's just, how are you going to... I don't know. It's ass backwards. It makes no sense. So. Like, I, I just assume that if you didn't like something, you just kind of forget about it. Yeah, because you don't like it. <laughs> Like, okay, a video game's coming out and you don't like it. Don't buy it. Don't don't watch videos on it. Just go about your day. Yeah, like that's it. Even if I like something, sometimes I'll just forget about it, you know. It's like you're trying to, you know, voice your opinion, but at the same time, you know, Kind of just let other people enjoy what they like, you know, even if you don't like it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, on another side note, you know what I found out what's rare, apparently? What's rare? Resident Evil Gaiden. Or Gaiden. Gaiden. Really Resident Evil Gaiden is rare. Just the cartridge alone is running for 70 bucks. I, I, it's Gaiden. And if you get it in the box, it's you can get it for three hundred and fifteen dollars. Wow! I've, so a uh, game, a game like this, is worth a shit game is worth, uh, <laughs> you know, that much money. No, look, it, the game you I've play, never played it. Play it on like a Retron or something. You play it on something on the TV. I'm sure it'll be fine. But playing it on a Game Boy is just really hard. And it has a very I, weird you, like combat system. And because it's kind of like Isn't it air, like top down? It's top down. But like and, it switches to first but person. But then it switches to first person and then when you attack, you have to hit the button just at the right time as the meter is like in the middle of the bar where the zombies uh, are. So you shoot them in spots like the head and then it'll go down. But mm-hmm. if you just you know, constantly miss, then it's going to be harder for you to get out. It's very strange because you can't really see a lot uh, what's going on. What the game wants you to do is you're on the ship and you're trying to find uh, Leon and you're Barry and you lost contact with him, so you're trying to find him. 
And it's misleading because Leon's on the cover. And you would think, you know, oh, I'm Leon. No, you're Barry. And you're looking for Leon. And Doesn't Barry die in that? Leon gets shot. And like then Barry's revealed to be a B O W. It's Leon. Or was it? Oh, it's Leon. Okay. Yeah. So it's a very strange non-canon ending. Nothing screams more non-canon than that. Nothing screams. Nothing screams. This is just a fucking Game Boy Color Resident Evil game than <laughs> this game. I mean, they're originally going to do Resident Evil One for Game Boy Color. But it's it's you can canceled. get it. You can get it. Yeah, really. I, I think people uploaded it, right? Yeah, like there aren't any. I think zombies are the only enemies in the game. They wow. it was like ninety percent done, but they canceled it at the last second, and they only included the zombies. Well, fun but fact, it, the, it looks good. Yeah, fun fact, they that version too was, uh, I believe it was right before uh, Gaiden came out, and. Gaiden's the only one that was rated T. It's the only Resident Evil game that's rated T. Mm -hmm. It is rated T for team. It is very strange seeing it with a T on the cover. But the cartridge alone, I got this cartridge for 10 bucks, and it was in the GameStop that I still go to sometimes when I do go to a GameStop, and it was just in the little window with a bunch of Game Boy games, and I was like, I want that. And I picked it up. I played it a few times, you know, on and off, especially when I was a kid. Um, so I have some memories with it, but it's not a very good game. But, you know, it's it's okay uh, for what they tried to do. The music was pretty funny. And, you know, just they tried. Let's just put it that way. They tried. But it's interesting. I just found out it was rare. So I didn't know it was that rare. I probably will never play it. But you want it. Mm. <laughs> no <laughs> but you want it I can think of better things to buy than Resident Evil Gaiden come on you don't want Resident Evil you want Resident Evil Survivor sealed <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit <laughs> you want it sealed Richard with the manual without manual without manual <laughs> is this from your collection <laughs> no I'm just kidding um uh, because <laughs> I know you have it without the manual. I do actually. I know you have That's two my, copies of it. It's my original copy. That's why I won't get rid of it. But I mean, how the fuck are they selling this for five hundred dollars? It's absolutely amazing. You think these games would just stay the same, but they get worse as they get older. They just keep going up and up. Like, I, I actually want to see how much Resident Evil Code Veronica goes for a sealed. No sealed GameCube. Oh my god, why did I open my Resident Evil 2, man? Like, I got it sealed for 30 bucks on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I opened it just because I was like, oh, but I want to open it. Like, you know. And now it's like the sealed GameCube ones go for so much. And I'm just like, why did I open it? I should have just bought another copy. Um, sealed for Dreamcast, Code Veronica currently goes for $90 or $175. Ooh. With other games, are you on eBay or Amazon? I'm on eBay. Amazon sucks uh, for those <laughs> things. You know, can't really sort it out. There's not very much sealed uh, Resident Evil Veronica's currently, uh, so it's kind of hard to find. I guess a sealed in Dreamcast. Um, Resident Evil, yeah, Resident Evils on GameCube are still expensive for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but Resident Evil Two sealed on GameCube currently goes for a hundred dollars. That's a hundred dollars you could have had. Yeah, hundred dollars. So, rip me right, and I gotta start getting the UK copies, um, my Japanese copies. I'm gonna start that very soon. Um, I just gotta pick up Revelations for PS4 and Xbox One, and then four for Xbox One, and then five for Xbox One, and then six. Ah, gotta get a lot. But you could get the Japan import of Resident Evil Gaiden for forty five dollars mm. on Amazon. Japanese import, that's not bad. Eight new from one hundred sixteen, one used from forty five. Mm. It's 
kind of has a cool cover. It's like a picture of a uh... the lifeboat. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I think I like that cover a lot better. I think I do too. Yeah. I don't know because I don't know the Leon thing is just kind of misleading. The Leon thing doesn't really tell me what I'm in for. The other one tell like the lifeboat with the. Is that what it's called, lifeboat? The the ring things that you throw out. Uh, what are they called? I used to know this. Why did, I, did I call it lifeboat? I called it a yeah. lifeboat. Uh, <laughs> What's it called? A, a buoy? No. It... <laughs> uh, buoys are things that you like throw to anchor shit down, right? Those are called buoys. I'm not even kidding. I'm not fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fucking around. Why don't we know this? What do you call the fucking things? The what? That, well, fucking uh, what the hell are they called? <laughs> um, throw re- life. <laughs> life. It's not a life preserver because that's what you wear. A life, life boy. <laughs> <laughs> A life ring, life ring, lifesaver, life donut. (laughs) Life preserver or life belt, also known as a Kisby ring or Perry Blue. Yeah, life. What is that word? Buy away? Buoy. (laughs) Buoy. See? A life buoy. A ring buoy. <laughs> buoy. I'm just calling it life ring. <laughs> yeah, you provide, know, the cover with the life ring. To provide buoyancy and prevent drowning. <laughs> yeah, so get the, uh... <laughs> the cover with the life ring tells me that it's a horror game. So I like that cover more. Maybe one day I'll just get the balls to get more Resident Evil sealed PS1 games. <laughs> Put out that money. So it's so hard to find. Let's see what Resident Evil 2 sealed goes for. $250. Wow. That's the lowest, I might add. You can also get it for $340. Resident Evil Survivor graded is three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Sealed. Resident Evil graded. It's like in a. It's like graded in a case. I don't know. But they cost more money. You get the Japanese version sealed for one hundred forty-seven. Yeah, I gotta get a lot of Japanese stuff. I gotta get a lot of Japanese PS One stuff. Mm-hmm. Get Resident Evil One, two. Yeah, Amazon has nothing. I typed yeah. in Resident Evil Sealed, and the only thing that came up was Revelations 2 for Xbox 360. That's what I'm saying. Their thing sucked. Like, I could type in Resident Evil 2 PS1 Sealed, and it's like, I get the one, the listings. Like, there's some that are, like, unrelated, but, you know, I don't know. You want Resident Evil 3 Sealed for $1,037? <laughs> why the fuck is it that high? I'll think about it. Ooh, look at this one. Tempting. Look at this guy. Next video game magazine, August 1999. Resident Evil 3. It has Nemesis on the front. That looks dope. It's too bad. I'm not going to pay $27.99 for that. That comes with a demo disc. And I'm all about that. You can get Resident Evil Director's Cut Greatest Hits for $13. Sealed? No. About to say, give me that right now. Get the uh, Resident Evil: The Final Chapter official movie novelization. Hmm. Oh, they're still doing novelizations for the final. Yeah. Chapter? Yeah. Wow. They never did a novelization for Afterlife, but they that's, did. That's interesting. That's they did novelizations. Yeah. I think they changed the covers for the Resident Evil movies because I'm seeing. Blu-rays with new covers. 
Hmm. They don't look that great. Resident Evil 3, Nemesis Series 3, Jill Valentine vs. Brainsucker, Real Shock, Action Figure. Real Shock. That is cool. Well, that is weird. Okay, so it shows it's Jill Valentine in her Regina costume. Like an actual figure, and then there's a brain sucker figure. Yeah, I know. You see it? No, I've seen it before, but I'll look it up. Goes for three hundred and sixty three dollars. Oh god. Let's collect these ten figures. Oh yeah, it is yeah, I've seen this before. Yeah, it's weird. Why Regina? I don't know. Do you see that thing on the side? That's a weird graphic. <laughs> the 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 one with like her face? No, it's like her and the brain sucker. It just looks weird. Yeah. It looks like her, her like shirt's like black on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so wrong. But I want it. <laughs> Hundred fifty dollars, dude. That's not bad, right? Hundred seventy four dollars. That's not bad. At all. It says it says ages eighteen and up. Are you eighteen? Mm, I am. I'm over eighteen. Set included special bonus parts for Nemesis Type Three. <laughs> the fuck? It's that's, rated that's M. A- that's something you just keep in the fucking box. Just don't open it. The figure has an ESRB rating. It does? Yeah, it says M on the right. Jesus. Moby Dick, what have you done? Why, Regina? Like The tours are something I always wanted to get more of. Yeah. I think they did make new Blu-ray covers. Because now I see one for Extinction, I saw one for Apocalypse, and I saw one for Afterlife. They're probably reprinting them to get ready for the new one. Hey, they have another weird Resident Evil 3 figure. It's Jill in her classic costume, <laughs> and but it's with a Hunter B. <laughs> so it's like, well, let's look at all of them, because it's on the back of this one. The first lineup is Jill in a miniskirt and a brain sucker. The other one is Jill in the classic, and then the Hunter, which is this one. Another one is Rebecca and the Tyrant. Then it's Claire and then the Plant, which I can understand. Leon and the Liquor. It's one of the the guys who look like Hunk and Birkin, final form. Uh, Brad, <laughs> Brad and the Tyrant. Brad has a figure. Brad and no, Brad and Mister X. What? Brad and Mr. X. Now I'm looking here. I'm going to show you this image here because this is very strange. We can send it through Skype. Wait, wait, wait. We have to do that. Let's see. I found a figure of Forest. It's. It's an undead forest and another zombie. Like, so just from looking on the back, I don't know if you can find these because I'm just looking at the series. You know, usually on the back, it's like, check out the other things we have. That's what this is. Just look at that. It's very odd. And then it looks like, is that Claire and type three nemesis or type? Wait, no, type two nemesis and Claire. What the fuck? Okay, so Jill and a brain sucker, Jill and a hunter, <laughs> Regina and a brain sucker, Carlos and Nemesis, so that makes sense. Claire and Nemesis type 3. <laughs> or 2, actually. No, type t- Okay, type 2. Brad and Mr. X. So some of these make sense. What's the last one? That's Mr. X and a random gas mask soldier. Yeah. It's very strange. You gonna buy all the lineups? 
Yeah. I can't even find them. <laughs> Spend $300 for one of them. And then there's this figure that's just Claire Redfield, but it says Biohazard 3 on it, and it's like, get figures for Nemesis. <laughs> I don't understand these toys, man. You can't even, like, follow them. Some of the box art is really... It's weird. Yeah. But it's cool. <laughs> Includes authentic video game actions. What does that even mean? So this one has Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Like, I want to see this link. Look at this. So it has Resident Evil 3 Nemesis on it, but it's Mr. X and then Chris from Code Veronica. <laughs> it's so strange. <laughs> like... It's like they pasted the real Chris, right, from the game, and then look, it's like the picture of the action figure, the plastic action figure. Like, they, did, they didn't they even put, like, an image of Mr. X. <laughs> I, I'm so, If you guys are watching the video of this, I'm going to put up this image right now. I'm going to, like, put this in my memos to not forget to put the... Look at that. That looks hilarious. <laughs> I just noticed that. It doesn't even look like Mr. X in the picture. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like, you see, like, the light reflecting off his, like, shiny head when they took the picture. It's like, what is that? Neither of these characters are from Resident Evil 3. Like... I get if it's, like, the third thing of their series, but it's called Resident Evil 3. Like, it says the name of the game. Like, it, like it's from the game. It's a hundred dollars. It's a hundred fucking dollars. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking money. And then they sold the ca- they sold these people by... These people. They sold these uh, characters by themselves as well. So you also have, they say, Biohazard 3, and then it'll just be Mr. X, you know... I found a 21-inch Nemesis collectible figure. Oh, yeah. That guy's... That fucker's rare. $500. Yeah, that fucker is rare. May not ship to Canada. (laughs) Sorry, Richard. Damn. Only 750 were made. That one's number, number seven. Wow. Well... I still gotta get my Resident Evil Toy Biz uh, thing. Toy Biz figures. Which are still, I think, affordable. I don't know. But I like when they're like, sealed! Nice! <laughs> like, they put like, <laughs> nice in the title. Like, fucking action figure, sealed, nice, rare. Yeah, there's like a lot here. It's crazy reading these listings. I hope you guys aren't bored by us doing this. It's interesting to see the, the prices of some things. I found a Hunter action figure, but it's orange. What the <laughs> it's an orange hunter. It's an orange hunter. Yeah, goes like, for fifteen bucks. Aw, he just wants to be loved. Nobody wants an orange hunter. A long box of Resident Evil goes for fifty bucks around there. That's not bad. I mean, finding those long box in good conditions, like you know, suck. <laughs> oh my god, he is orange. Looks like he was like left out in the rain or something. <laughs> I didn't even know they had Jill Valentine Funko Pops. They got the pop figures, bro. But I gotta like <laughs> get all of them. Uh, you want to know why? Because there's a tyrant one, and it's mm. only coming. It's only coming to Hot Topic. Hmm. So I got to go to my Hot Topic in the mall across from where I work and just get it. But I think I, they better have it. Because, <laughs> you know. I'm the worst thing ever. The Funko Pop ones are coming out this month. I don't know when, but. Okay, so maybe you can include a picture of this in the podcast. And the description of the item as well. Tell me what's wrong with this. Okay. Um. Uh, 
That's from the fifth element. Right? Is it? No. <laughs> Maybe it is from the fifth element. Is it? Or what it... The, the anime girl in the box looks... <laughs> what? But if you read the title, it's like Resident Evil... Mia yeah, this is, Resi- this is not in Resident Evil. What the fuck? Found a Vertigo figure. Ooh. 15 bucks. Yeah, I'm going to get the, the Funko Pop, the rest of them. I'm going to order the rest of them. Because I, the, I need them all. So, whenever they come out, uh, mine should be coming soon, so I'll do a Resident Evil collection on that. And I got I ordered Nemesis. I pre-ordered him. Mm. Uh, I would have pre-ordered Jill too, but Nemesis was calling my name, so I was like, okay. But I'm gonna get the other ones. Don't worry. Uh, and the Tyrant one, I will be on the hunt for at Hot Topic. So, what are your thoughts on Resident Evil: The Final Chapter? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Ooh, okay. So. By the way, there's two tyrants. There's one at Target and then one at Hot Topic. That, that's fucking ridiculous. One's green and one's red. Like it has a green. It glows in the dark. What? Gotta collect them all. What? What? Fuck. No. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, the Resident Evil Final Chapter trailers have also come out uh, since all this stuff has happened of us not doing a show together. And it looks like a piece of shit, but I love it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. It looks it looks pretty funny. Mm-hmm. I, I have a lot of good memories seeing these in theaters, so I'm kind of looking forward to not only looking forward to Resident Evil 7 in that same week, but seeing the movie as well. You've been okay. seeing them in theaters since the first one? Yes, I have. So it's tradition. So if this mm. is the final one, wink, wink, which it is not, uh, then wait, I don't fucking know. But, you know, I'm going to go see it and then, you know, do a we can do a video on it, talk about it, also do our own constructive reviews. But uh, I, I look forward to that process and watching it. Just laughing my ass off, <laughs> you know. Maybe if you have a few drinks, I don't know. I'll figure it out, but it'll be fun. Yeah, it looks terrible. Yeah, so. It it's, looks really bad. Yeah. They just don't care. <laughs> they just stopped caring a while ago, but yeah, it looks not... awesome, though. It doesn't look awesome. Like, it looks fucking so bad, Like, but it looks the, fucking awesome. The effects look great. Yeah. That, that's one thing that they Take always... Take down Paradise City. <laughs> You're getting into it. Hey man, they chose a song. They did. They did. Oh, I mean it it looks like it looks like you gave a bunch of money to people <laughs> who didn't did want they did. <laughs> You gave a bunch of money to people who just didn't care. <laughs> they came up with Resident Evil, the final chapter. Like, there's no. I don't think there's any passion to tell a good story here, or to tell to to make something good. It's just... I can't even take the name seriously. <laughs> it's just cheap entertainment. Um, that's what I said in my trailer reaction. I'm like, this just looks like entertainment. Yeah, like if it's not going to be on anyone's top lists or anything, it's... It'll be on mine. You get a little more a little more stuff if you're a Resident Evil fan. There's a little more to get out of it. But uh, I think for the most part, people are going to watch Chris? it. Where's Chris? Yeah, he's not in the movie. How the fuck do you just ignore a character? I've never seen a character more ignored than Chris. What happened to him at the end of Afterlife? I don't fucking know. You've been you've been saying that ever since Retribution. 
That's what I'm saying. What ever, happened ever to since, him? <laughs> ever since 2012. Paul Anderson, what the fuck? What happened to Chris? And then two movies later, you're ending the series and you're not explaining what happened to Chris. Like, I know the actor, like, you know, I don't know if he's doing anything anymore. I don't know. I know he did Prison Break. And I know he came out gay after the fact. But what does it matter? Where the fuck's Chris? Recast him. It's not even like he was a good Chris anyway. <laughs> they recasted Wesker. Yeah. For like the millionth fucking time. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. I'm just going to stand here. Oh. Where are my glasses? Oh. Talking a little voice. Sit in the back in the dock and oh, tell him to take the White House. Oh. Alice. <laughs> and then she goes back to the Red Queen and she's in the fucking tunnel. And like, They recasted the Red Queen like three times. And they have Dr. Isaacs in there somehow. <laughs> or whatever the fuck his name is. Is that his name? I don't fucking <laughs> know. His, yeah. Dr. Isaac. And then he's like back. Mm-hmm. And then Michelle Rodriguez was somehow back in the last one. I don't fucking know what's going on, dude. They, they were clones. I know they're a clone, but dude, like, come on, like, get the fuck out of here, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what the fuck? How the hell, like, are you gonna say that this is a Resident Evil movie? You know, but it, it is. It's called Resident Evil Final Chapter. We got to mm-hmm. deal with it. You know, it's a lost. It, it, the movies are so gone. <laughs> all you can do is just laugh, man. That's all you can do. I just enjoy the show. Get some popcorn, get a nice soda, and enjoy the fucking movie. Have a few drinks and enjoy the movie. Just enjoy it. Go with friends. Do whatever. Anyone listening, do this. Just watch it. It's going to be funny. You're just going to enjoy yourself. You can't even get mad anymore, especially if you're spending money to go see these. You can't even get mad. You can't even sit here and tell me you're getting mad at a fucking film. Especially this one (laughs) of this nature. When she drives a car into a giant dragon dragon bat in the trailer that's from resident evil 5 oh i don't care yeah paul anderson like takes these random creatures and just enlarges them he's like you know what i remember that from a game that came out you know eight years ago (laughs) oh perfect let's throw that in the game he did it with the liquor and he did it with the random bat parasite the random RE5 Magini parasites that were in Retribution for no reason. He had, like, multiple executions. Or four, actually. Was it four? Or... Yeah, three executions. I don't give a shit if it was, like, a, a simulator. Don't hide behind <laughs> that. What's up with them hiding behind? Oh, it's a clone, so it's okay. It's a simulation, like... so it's okay. It's like, it looks fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so stupid. There were two. Like, if you, like, look at it. You're just like, this is fucking, this is a mess. And they're like running up with their axes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, and, and like, and so all you could do is just sit there with your mouth open, just be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what am I and watching? It's just, it's absolutely amazing. You can't even turn away from it. It's just, it's, it's phenomenal. You, you're sitting there. And you're watching someone throw things into, like, just onto the screen and just seeing really what sticks and just say, oh, well, this is from the game, so let's put that in there. And then you have these characters cosplaying as the characters that are supposed to be in the game. Doesn't really make sense. You know, Paul Anderson gets to show off his wife. We get it. But it's just... If it is the final chapter, I mean, it makes Sony Pictures a lot of fucking money. These yeah, movies make yeah. a lot. If this one just tanks, you know, because people are just, like, tired of it, which, you know, apparently it, not. It might tank in the U.S. because I know no one in the U.S. cares for them, but they do very well. They do well. well in the U.S. too. But they do. They make all of their money from foreign countries. But retro, but the thing is, is that they always break over $100 million. Yeah, that's money from other countries. Not from the U.S. gross alone? No. That's the worldwide gross. No, I know, but I was saying I could have swore that this one grossed a lot, the last one. It grossed like $200 million, I think, 
I'm going to look it up. But U.S.? <laughs> uh, <laughs> U.S.? What is that? Is that, is that, is that too, uh, too, too uh, high? <laughs> the set probably is. So the worldwide gross was $240 million. A certain portion of that was from the U.S. Most of it came from other countries. So we'll have to see if we can pull up like the film gross or something. Yeah, like if you look up the Resident Evil film series where it like shows you a list. Let's see. They, they might show the oh, domestic yeah, budget. So the first one was forty million. Uh huh. The apocalypse was fifty one million. Mm-hmm. These are just from North America. Fifty million for extinction. Sixty million for afterlife. Mm-hmm. And then forty two million with retribution. So forty two million out of two hundred and forty million was from the US. Yes. But all that other money came from other countries. Yeah, hundred and ninety seven million yeah. in other countries. So you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh it did drop. Uh but this one has the biggest budget of sixty five million, so I think I'll make back its budget in the U.S. Uh, I don't think it, you know, I mean, the last one, it's going to make back its budget no matter what. But there's a lot of, like, set injuries and deaths and mm-hmm. issues with this one. So uh, this, mo- this movie's already cursed. Well, they have to not only make back their budget, they have to at least multiply their budget by two. Oh yeah, because of the marketing. Usually, yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of a rule. Like, if you take, I, f- I forget how it is exactly. It's like you take the budget, and you or you take the worldwide gross and you divide that by two or something. I I don't remember. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure it'll make back its money. I mean, they they are very successful in other countries. They have it set. Like, they have the best job in the world. They know exactly what they're doing. Because all they have to do is make whatever this is. They they have very small budgets, too. Like 30 million, 40 million, 60 million. 65. 65 million. Big boys now. Big boys. Catching up, catching up to the big leagues now. <laughs> no, I wish I could make a movie with sixty-five million. That'd be great. That'd be perfect. Because then, if it's really good, it can make back like a lot more money. It's very unfortunate what happened to the one girl. Um, yeah, that's that's very sad. She lost an arm, and she was in a coma for a little bit. They had to amputate the arm. Yep. But she's she's back, you know. Her husband supported her a lot. She uh, she's doing better and better each day. Someone else died though. Yeah, there was someone who died because something fell on them and crushed them. I think it was a jeep. It's so fucked, man. <laughs> I know. This movie's an ex poltergeist. This movie's fucking cursed. It's got a death curse. Ralph. Ralph. They're going to use CGI to recreate yeah. Ralph's face. <laughs> oh, man. Friday 13th is coming up, actually. Is it like it's, the date or the movie? Uh, next Friday is Friday 13th, so you know what that means. Mm. i got to watch all the Friday 13ths in a week. Pull an all-nighter. Do that. Actually... Yeah, I'm off a few days next week, so. Got this shit. But, uh, I don't know, man. I mean, it, it's finally ending, and, I mean, maybe. And mm-hmm. I think that they're, you know, it's the end of an era, for sure. I mean, will you be going out and partaking in the festivities that is this movie? Mm, I would only do it to make a video. Well, yeah. Or to talk about it on a show. Yeah. 
or an, or a special video what you're doing i'd rather like just wait until it's out on home video to watch it but i mean i could do it yeah i mean you know I just, uh, <laughs> it should be fun <laughs> it's like i didn't see rogue one until uh, a few days ago yeah and i'm a huge star wars fan so i usually don't like rush out to the theaters unless it's like something really big of course of course fun fact did you know that the character dr isaacs is named after the actor jason isaacs who was supposed to play william birkin in the first movie but couldn't Mm. you know the very beginning where the guy's narrating he's like the umbrella corporation is the largest corporation in the world yeah its profits are generated by military experimentation or whatever like that's the voice of william birkin yeah but they uh they couldn't keep him so they changed the character to dr isaacs rip rip i like the actor who plays isaacs he's in game of thrones no yeah he's a good actor it's just a shame that he's in this shit no (laughs) (laughs) well he he probably like likes filming them because i'm sure he doesn't care he's He's probably just like "Mm, paycheck hey i would want to be in one of these movies (laughs) no i would no i'm I'm serious like it's no it's fun (laughs) it's fun like i mean they they seem fun um you know they're just kind of going with it at this point i feel like a lot of that money is just kind of seeing what different things they can do just for fun because they can uh Mm -hmm. so you know i'm looking forward to it. it's going to be a a week we're going to get cluster fucked with resident evil so you got uh resident Evil 7 and that coming out that same week so that's going to be interesting as i work on multiple reviews at one time so you can pick up the novelization if you feel inclined to do Actually, so. Actually, yeah, that would be a, interesting because then maybe if we read it, we can do a show about it because sometimes they are significantly different. Mm-hmm. How much is the novelization going for? I'm going to look it up. Books usually go for 10 bucks. Really? Yeah. They're very cheap. I'll order it right now. Nice. Um, the uh, this week, And plus, uh, maybe I'll just get the other ones because why not? Uh, the, the overall, uh, well, it's actually 629. Is that the digital version or is that the, the mass market paperback then for that's, $6? Yeah, that's the one sense. you want. The Kindle version is 499. Mm-hmm. Do you have a Kindle? Uh, my dad does. I just have a regular tablet, but I use the Kindle app on my phone. So if you want to get the digital version, you can do that. Save a couple bucks. But I can get the physical. You can get the physical and add it to the collection. There was a physical for Retribution, which I did not know that. Or a novel for Retribution. Um, that's $7.91. Mm-hmm. There's one for... The only one was Afterlife. They just kind of just said, fuck it. It looks like it. they have one for one and Apocalypse. They call it Genesis. Yeah. The first one's called Genesis. Uh, the second one's called Apocalypse. Apocalypse. And then Extinction and then Retribution. So why would they call it Genesis? Probably to avoid confusion, At, maybe. SD Perry's, maybe, because they were just called like Resident Evil, The Umbrella Conspiracy. I don't know. Even they had subtitles to every one. They all, they all had like one word subtitles. Yeah. Up until final chapter. Fuck all that shit. No. Um, I remember when the original title was Resident Evil Rising. Yeah. Which was a much better title, I think. We, I think we probably talked about that. I think. Probably. When it was like announced. Um. Yeah, I mean, I never really got the re-release of the books either. Um. With those different covers, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I like the older ones a lot better. They're yeah, they're they're better covers. But I could pre-order it and do that. I don't know, something to read. Um. Well, we do 
have some questions as well. Okay. Uh, we kind of hit all a lot of the stuff that we wanted to uh, talk about. Um, also, just you know, shipping sure randomly. Uh, some of the stuff that uh, I also wanted to talk about real quick was the. Oh, I'm gonna make sure I do not sneeze. Okay, we're good. I have to make sure that. Uh, so for the uh, Resident Evil um, reviews that I'm doing, actually, as I was gonna uh, mention it, because I might have mentioned it before on a stream, or somewhere else, or maybe on the last podcast. I don't even know. But yeah, I do want to work on, or I'm currently working on now that the new year started. Uh, just kind of re-reviews of one through three uh, of the games. Very nice. Kind of going back and doing better narration, more consistent audio, uh, making it nice. So I'm going to do that for one, two, and three. Recording uh, gonna, new footage? I Yeah, I'm going to use new footage that I've gotten over the past few years. I have a lot of HD footage stuff from videos and whatnot, so I can use that. Um, so I'll do that because, you know, Mm-hmm. I don't have to waste time getting footage when I got a lot of stuff from streams over the summer and and all that. So uh, the footage is not an issue, and you know if I need to capture some stuff, I will. But I'm going to be taking out those old scripts, which I still have on my hard drive, and just going back and writing some stuff in there, adding some stuff, changing some stuff. It's going to be interesting. But I'm currently working on that, so I figured I'd announce it here on the podcast. So it's something you guys can look forward to in the next few months. I'm just going to be putting them out. Uh, if I can get the Resident Evil 2 review out by the end of this month, that would be lovely. Uh, just to coincide with the anniversary. But I guess we'll see. I really enjoy reviews. Yeah, they're fun. So I haven't worked on one in a little while. So you know, I figured before I have to work on the Resident Evil 7 one, uh, which I will be doing as well. I'll just be writing that as I play. Uh, it's going to be pretty busy. So, But we're going to do it. We're going to do it. So I figured I'd let you guys know. But I am doing that, and it's going to be really fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Work on that stuff. Um, okay, so with the questions, I didn't do a traditional video. Um, I just didn't have time. But I put it up on Twitter and Facebook that I was doing questions. We didn't get like a million. Um, we didn't get novels. We're not going to be here for an hour doing questions. Um, you know, we did get through the topics and that fairly decent time but we did cover uh a lot of ground that you know we needed to cover because it's been a while it's been a long time uh so these questions uh again aren't the longest but we're gonna make way with them and i'll bring them up here uh, someone asked me a question on ps4 so i'm gonna have to look at that as well so and if you missed out on the questions like the Let's Talk Resident Evil page, and you can like that and know what, what we're doing and all that shit. So, we got these comments here. Let's see this. Okay. How many questions do we have? I mean, maybe like 20 something. Uh, 20 something? Yeah. If we want to count every single one that's in these questions around there. Uh,. And then I got a question on Twitter. PS4. Kurt Richards sent a question in. It looks like so. But we'll get through them. Like I said, there could have been more, but uh, if I dropped the ball on that, that is my fault. So, <clears throat> it would be interesting. This is from Christopher uh, Prettyman. Um, it would be interesting to hear from you guys on when you all think now that RE7 is being pushed out the door in a few weeks, when we could possibly expect any kind of news for a certain remake with the two at the end of the title. Also, Happy New Year's to all you guys. Uh, well. January. I'd say, like, next year, you know, you'll get an actual, like, game. Uh, news, though, yeah, this month seems likely. But that, the act- I know you're asking for the news, but. I feel like the news might cater to when the game is coming out. Uh, I'd say next year. I mean, maybe this year. Like if it's if it's like for fall or something like that, I could see them, you know, just doing that, you know. 
I can see them releasing the game at the tail end of this year. Yeah, like something like that. Like, but as far like top, as like topping it off, you know. But they they even said that they would showcase gameplay in January. Yeah, there's sure. an there's an article for it online. Okay, then there you go. That's complete bullshit. But no, no, I'm kidding. It could um, be. It could be complete bullshit. Maybe yeah. we won't get anything. <laughs> maybe maybe they canceled the game. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I hope Richard, not. you gotta stop coming on the show and giving false fucking shit. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I yeah. So this month, if we're getting that gameplay, we're definitely gonna you know talk about it um, as well. So if there's any more news coming out uh, post RE7 and the RE2 news, we'll be sure to do another episode and talking about our experiences with the game uh, with RE7 as well as our thoughts on the trailer. I'll definitely do a trailer reaction uh, because it's a pretty big thing to to come out. You know, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty kind of like a probably the most anticipated remake that I could think of that isn't like something like Final Fantasy VII. A lot of people are looking forward to this Resident Evil Two remake. So they don't do remakes very often. No, and they don't do them well very often. So. I wish Konami would make a Silent Hill 1 remake. Oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be really cool. If Team Silent got together to just remake something. Uh, that Yeah, that'd be cool. They're never going to get back together. They're never going to do it, but... No. If they, if they have, dream. like... If they have another studio to kind of go back and do it properly, make it... I feel like, like, yeah, I feel like they would just play it, to, like, Yeah. Like, make it play the it, same way as the original. Let it be developed by... People who love that game and like are fans, you mm-hmm. know, and just like I don't know, just just try to have it as close to the original as possible with making like a your own twist on it and coming from fans, you know. That's always keep a good keep thing. Twin Perfect away. Yeah, keep, <laughs> keep them away, please. I don't even know if they're still alive anymore. Um. Um. Yeah, keep them away. Um, they're, not very, <laughs> they're not very good. Uh, the thing is, is uh, yeah, I mean, Resident Evil 2 is, you know, it's a game that that's just a lot of people think of Resident Evil and they think of that game. And it was, you know, one of the biggest games of the time and revolutionary in so many ways. It, it just showed what the Resident Evil series can do. And it was, you know, going past the mansion and into a city it was a lot more broader, bigger, longer. Uh, it was it was a, it was kind of like a kind of like a like a step up from just the the you know the the walls of the mansion and some of the enemies. It was it was just throwing a bunch of shit at you. Um, and I think at the end of the day, people remember that. And when they want a remake, they want to see those same elements brought into the game uh but also reinventing a lot of the things that you know people are used to uh but whether or not it goes fixed camera angles or behind the back i mean we don't know that's going to be very interesting to find out that'll also lead into another conversation you know at some point oh which Mm -hmm. is better which should which would be preferred i don't know or this remake classic yeah, like classic, but as, as far as like what they're going to choose, I don't know, because it could go either way. Um, but if they really want to stick to the fans, fucking fix camera angles all the way, please. I know Mark Main doesn't want it, but Mark Main, we're going to play better. <laughs> we love you, Mark Main. Love you. Um, but thank you, Christopher, for that. Uh, question and happy new year i hope you had a really good one um richard martell and i'm about to sneeze so hang on okay so richard martell says have you pre-ordered re7 uh how about the deluxe edition or purchasing the collector's edition uh he has another question as well Yes, I have. Um, I have gotten the collect the 
collector's edition with the house and the finger and the everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be getting it, so it's going to be great. Um, definitely looking forward to going to the Midnight Launch, recording a video. I'm doing an unboxing video for you guys. So, yeah, it's going to be awesome. I have not pre-ordered it. You have not pre-ordered it? Will you be partaking in any midnight festivities? Or will you be just mm. getting it digitally? I have uh, I've never done a midnight launch before, and I've never pre-ordered a game before. Will you be getting this game digitally? Digitally, I don't know. I... I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, I don't know if I'll be buying it at lunch. At, at lunch. At launch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'll be getting it at lunch, but yeah. I mean, if I have time on my lunch, maybe. No. Um, yeah. I'm gonna be busy, right? Like, I'm gonna be working. Oh, boo. Who, no. <laughs> I'm gonna be working. In... <laughs> I'm gonna be in over- overdrive mode. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they all say. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what I'll get. I'm not opposed to getting it digitally, and I'm not opposed to getting it physically. A house like the one that you're getting sounds really cool. You want the house? Do you know what it comes with? It comes Have with a house. It? Have you seen it? it? Comes with the house. Comes with the. Doesn't it come with like a keychain or something. A finger USB flash drive. <laughs> Close enough. So I can go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, now I have to buy it. Yeah. Well, no, because it's uh, that's the kind of the whole joke is you know is the finger, and uh, they're giving us the finger, so they mm-hmm. tell us to go fuck ourselves. That that was the joke. But yes, so <laughs> and how? All right, so you will not be partaking in any fun activities leading up to this game. I probably not. I don't know any place that's doing it. Well, you know that uh, I'm keeping this job at Best Buy, right? I found out today. Nice. So you know what that means? No. I can plan that trip to come visit your bitch ass soon. <laughs> mm-hmm. That'll be fun. So. Make all the vids. I could I could visit you soon, so that'd be cool. And then we can do more videos and stuff, podcasts yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So. Hello. Hello. Okay, you're here. Yeah, what was here. my voice not registering? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I was talking. I'm sure on the Audacity, it'll hear you talking, but I guess over the Skype call, it was being. Anyway, yes, I do. Yeah, we're going to plan that out, too. That'll yeah, be cool. yeah. I, I was saying that it'll be cool. We'll make a lot of videos. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, but uh, he still has some more. Uh, he was, uh, has some questions about the VR. Or so, Have you had a chance to play it in VR yet? If so, what are your impressions? So I listen to the podcast. I will listen. <coughs> Speak. Sorry. <laughs> I will listen to the podcast so long as you as long as you avoid the theories based on any leaks or yeah okay so I mean we're not we're not doing any leaks or anything like that we just doing the basic news so no worries uh, I'll make sure I reply to you man so you know to listen to this so you can hear your own question thank you Richard for the question uh, Bobby Bobby uh, Refuse, the Refuse. Uh, I'm trying to think of something. Oh, this guy didn't have a question, but I'll read it. I'm trying to think of something uh, to ask, but I'm drawing a blank. So I'll just say I look forward to hearing the new episode and the return of Richard. Also, Happy New Year to you guys involved with Let's Talk Resident Evil. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. All right. So Mark Bain, what happens? If RE seven fails, (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh man. If it fails, then they definitely won't be doing another game like this. <laughs> right? Right. I mean, I don't think so. They'll, they'll change their strategy. Yeah. I like I just like I just like how he put it in in like uh Roman numerals too. Like, like Resident v- Evil 7 VII. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, his second question is <laughs> thoughts on Fuller House season two. The fuck should I know? I know. I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. Mm. So I watched Full House religiously. So um, I would know. It's a good season. Richard, do you, your thoughts? Do you have to watch Fuller House? <laughs> no, do you have to watch Full House to understand Fuller House? Not really. No. Okay. Full House never really had much of a story, uh, but Fuller House just, it's like they're, the daughter DJ, her husband died, kind of like how Danny's wife died in the beginning of the first one, had to raise the daughters with Uncle Jesse and Joey, but now DJ has to have her sister Stephanie. No idea what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, so that's the part, uh, um, don't know who any of those people are. Okay, so have you ever seen Full House? No. <laughs> okay, well then, so what's the fucking point? Why am I talking about this? No, number three, do you guys still looking forward to? So let's fix that. Are you guys still looking forward to seeing the Resident Evil TV show? Well, if it's still happening, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think it's happening. It was probably one of those things that they tossed around. Thought it was a good idea. Then they realized that it would have to require work and not to be lazy. And that was it. I remember we talked about an article uh, about it on one of the episodes with Richard yeah. a while ago. I remember talking a lot about... Arkley Mountains or Arkley or... Arkley or something. Ar- what? I thought that's what it was called or trying to be called. I don't the, think The TV show? Yeah. That would have been a cool title, but it would have restricted it to Resident Evil 1 only. <laughs> Should just be like Bates Motel. Bates Motel. Um, Haven't yeah, seen that. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, it's okay. I only saw the first season. I haven't mm. seen the rest. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's... if I don't, I, I don't think it's happening, but if it does happen, that would be cool, because I think you know, we express some excitement towards it, some kind of interesting things they can do with the story. Um, you know, that itself kind of opens it for a lot of possibilities, you know. So, uh, the fourth question is, Alex, <coughs> Alex versus, Al- <laughs> drink some fucking water. I, I'm going to get a drink. Hang on. I'll cut this out, but I got to get a drink. My balls are fry. All right. So I'm going to open this up. All right. And then we can start. Hmm. Alex versus Albert Wesker. Who is better in terms of their goal? <laughs> I say Alex. That's what he said. He said, I say... Alex. <laughs> As in terms of their goals, I'd have to say Albert Wesker. I mean, because Albert Wesker came pretty damn close. Yeah. In five. Like, Albert Albert Wesker had bigger ambitions. 
Yeah, like global saturation, fucking big ass like <clears throat> volcanoes and I don't remember what Alex's goal was. Wasn't it to like transfer her body? No, she wanted to transfer her consciousness into the body of yeah, Natalia. Something like that. Too it's bad the like... game sucks. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. I'm joking. I haven't played in like two years. I like Revelations too. <laughs> I'd actually go back and play it. Because now it's 15 bucks on PS4 sealed in our store. Hmm. So, well, it's actually 20 but our discount, I get it for 15 So I might actually pick up a physical copy that I do not own yet. I got to own. Go for it. Might as well. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd say Albert, though. Albert Wesker definitely had greater ambitions and also came very close to... Maybe, you know what? No, I'll change <laughs> it to Alex. Really? Yeah, because, like, one is, like, okay, so you're trying to destroy the world, which is pretty big. But the other one is switching bodies. What do you think is more realistic in a Resident Evil universe? Probably switching bodies. No. No. Wait, was that part of the question? No. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No, it was not. What's more realistic? Definitely the destroying the world thing. Yeah. But uh, if you're judging it like based on how ambitious the goal is, I don't know. Like switching bodies is pretty, pretty life changing. Change the course of history with that. Hmm. Become immortal, never die. I don't know. I mean, he said, well, also, I'm tired of people saying I want to see Wesker return because then I have to say which Wesker. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) Really? (laughs) Really? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, he doesn't like it because he has to ask. Which Wesker? Which one? I don't think too many people know that, Alex. Yeah, I mean, not enough to, like, say... Like, if people say Wesker, (laughs) half the time they're talking about fucking Wesker, okay? Yeah. Like, nine times out of ten. Guaranteed. Yep, I agree. So, okay, he also. All right, he also said, let's see what we got here. Do you think Capcom will do a four, five, and six CGI movie? <laughs> you know, four through six CGI movie. It'll focus on different characters that have only been in one game. But the fourth one should have Jake Claire, <laughs> Mora, and Sherry. Okay, so four, five, and six. See CGI movie, right? But <laughs> God damn it! Um. Well. It, why would four? Why would a four CGI movie have Jill, Claire, Sherry? Like, why would why? I don't know. Um, no, nah, man, you don't have to do CGI movies for them, man. Uh, It'd be cool. Why should I even answer this seriously? <laughs> I would prefer it if they did like live action movies. Yeah, like if they did like live a- like at that point, you might as well just do live action. I mean, Mark Maid, wouldn't you want to see a live action of those movies versus another animated movie of something different? I mean, it be like it showing different characters like perspectives or different like characters in the storyline. Like, so if there was like an animated movie of six and you saw certain things or characters that you didn't see. Kind of like, kind of like a reimagining that they're doing for an animator or going back and showing things that people didn't notice. That would be interesting. Or if the director had some kind of vision that 
was very different than the games. I mean, that would be cool, but I mean, you're not going to get it from different like people, you know? But yeah. He was just asking if it would be cool. I mean, sure. Maybe we could see what the hell Doug was doing in 5 while uh, Chris and Sheva were running around. I don't know. You don't have to tell me twice. You don't have to tell me twice. If Capcom did go with RE4 or 5, would 6 and 7 be different games? Could you repeat that, please? If Capcom did go with RE4 or 5, would 6 and 7, <laughs> or I should put VII, be different games? <laughs> Wait, so are you saying if Capcom is stuck with 4 and 5? Like, stuck with the same kind of gameplay? Because 4 and 5 were very... All right, look, I'll try to I'll try to answer this as serious as I can. I'm guessing you're saying that Resident Evil 4 and 5 were very similar, right? 6 was completely different. So you're saying if they made six like four and five, where it wasn't like bloated or rushed or anything like, like if that. they made it like like over the shoulder can't move. But he's saying with six and seven be different games. If they went with four and five, but he doesn't specify what. So I'm, See, I'm I don't to like I don't I'm trying to like finish the question for him. I don't fucking know what that means. <laughs> That's why it's funny. I don't know what that means. I, I don't even think he knows what it means. You gotta proofread, man. You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta put some punctuation. I can't understand what the hell this is saying. Um, sure. <laughs> um, I don't know. Would four, five, and six, and you know. If they go with four and five, would six Seven, and the... I mean, six was going to be that way no matter what. I mean, if they had that many people working on it, that many stories to tell, you know. They wanted it to be, like, more action accessible. Like, oh, you can choose what you want to do, you know, but it's like, uh, um, you know, and then because of that reaction, seven is the way it is. So, <clears throat> pick your poison. And then his last question is, where is Ark Thompson? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where the hell he is. I mean, he's probably still fucking, I don't know, forgetting where the hell he is. He probably never made it off that island. He, has, he hit his head so damn hard. Is Ark his real name? I think so, yeah. Ark. Don't you go? You go by a different name, right? He thinks his name is Vincent. Okay. I think I remember you talking about that in yeah, one of the podcasts. And then, and then he's like, he's he's friends with Leon. Sure. So that's why he's in that island to look for him. Or Sheena Island, whatever that's called. It's actually referenced in Zero. Yeah. So it happened. The best fucking artwork ever is just... Arc with the fucking coat. <laughs> it looks like shit. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> with, with that, we have Bob... Bob Casella, what's going on, Bob? Good supporter of the channel and the show. Uh, he says, how do you think they'll wrap up the RE final chapter to close out the movie franchise? That was his first question. He has two questions. That's one of two. How do you think they'll close it up? I mean, probably with Alice, like, you know, dying. That'd be pretty epic. Um, maybe she, like, finally stops, like, Umbrella, I guess like the 10th time and then she could like you know <clears throat> die but also you know because if she dies then at least we know there won't be any more movies 
Yeah. Um. Look, I don't know. I mean, they, I, I, think I don't think there is a good way to definitively end that series. I mean, considering it's the ending, you can really do whatever. But, you know, maybe some kick-ass fight scenes, some nice explosions. All the stuff that I pay to go see these movies for that I'm, isn't I'm, Resident I'm, Evil. I'm so detached from those characters. Yeah, it's hard to, like, feel for them. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't care about any of them. Yeah, it's like... I like the it's effects. Really, it's really hard to feel for cosplayers. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I feel like whatever they did, they, you know, they felt that it was right, and, you know, comments... Seeing the, these characters at, at the end of an era, you know, is it? It's a little, uh, a little strange. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think uh, you know. I don't really think it matters because they're gonna, whether it's done or not, they're still gonna find a way to probably bring it back of some some way. <clears throat> but you know, I'm curious to see it just because you know I do think that. <clears throat> the movie's tried at some point. Like I do actually think Extinction's a fairly good movie. Mm-hmm. Extinction was probably like the best one. And it wasn't directed by Paul W. S. Anderson. What do you know? No. Um it was directed by it was a solid film. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was a it was a good zombie movie. Yeah. Like it wasn't even a Resident Evil film, but it was like a solid film. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it had Resident Evil elements in it, but it was like you know had the crows and everything. And I think like on it, like shit on its own though, like everyone did a good job. Yeah, like on its own, like even if you took the Resident Evil out of it, you're just like, damn, there's some good cinematography. It's dark. It's kind of gritty, you know, with that desert feel. It feels like that. Um, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the tyrant prosthetics at the end, they yeah, were cool. Those, yeah. Um. There was some good good stunts in there. Yeah. I mean, it's hot in that movie. I think she looks the best in that movie. I think... I think so. Yeah. I like her and her little get-up. Yeah, she looks... Yeah. She had the best look in Extinction. I don't... Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, it's. uh, It wasn't. It wasn't. I also remember like the scene where Claire's friend dies, and she's like trying to get the zombies off him, and she's shooting them with the shotgun. Yeah, I remember that. And then he dies, and she just screams into the air. It was her boy toy. Yeah. Yeah, He, he was never referenced again, but. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's cool. And she's seeing... still in the movies. Ali yeah. Larder, or yeah, Ali Larder. That that was a good moment because you had a character reacting emotionally to someone else. Like it wasn't like yeah, I like I like the idea of them being camped out in groups and trying to survive. It was very yeah, and like everyone very day, very day of the deadish. Everyone's kind of like, this is all we have. Like we have to, yeah. we have, have to like each other. Dead? No. I've seen I've seen we night have I've seen to watch that movie. I've seen night dawn you day land no not day land dude we have to well I'll ask you off the air when you're off the we have to watch that movie cuz you will love that movie. Hmm. It's one of the best one of my favorite movies in general right mm-hmm. and, you know dawn of the dead is as well. It has one of the most disturbing <laughs> death scenes I've ever seen. It is the darkest like you know, uh, film I can think of. You know the scene where dark. like the guy gets his throat bit out. Yeah, and like his vocal cords start going up and up. Like, yeah, higher pitched. Yep. Um. Like I watched an execution video where a guy got decapitated. I didn't go out looking for the video. Like someone sent it to me. <laughs> Rip. And uh, D friend, don't do it. <laughs> don't watch that. But the the sound the guy made was identical to the one 
that the guy it's made interesting him. because tom savini that they, the they, people quote that as his best work that movie mm. and it i can 100 percent agree um plus he was a vietnam photographer yep so he also got a lot of everything's realistic with him uh to the t so a lot of explosions or you know decapitations or any kind of severed limb is all through the eye of the camera that you know that was his kind of escape fun fact day of the dead's a phenomenal film um and they and speaking of extinction they are trying to get the zombies to communicate and yeah it's very yeah. like bub uh and the thing is is that the the movie day of the dead is so dark and it's so just brutal and cold it just it feels like you're isolated you know you're underground with these group of military men who are falling apart the group's falling apart it's so you're gonna you would love it you would absolutely love it it, it does have it has really good 80s synth if you don't like 80s synth some people think it's annoying but it has great 80s music um i actually want the soundtrack really bad uh it has a great soundtrack and it's a very different, you, you know, Romero film. It's a shame that uh, apparently they wanted to shoot a lot of it, you know, more of it above ground, but they didn't have the budget. Mm. There was supposed to be an all-out war between uh, the zombies or something like that, like a whole war, uh, but they cut it out. I think Unfortunately, it was yeah, that's the reality of filmmaking. It kind yeah. of sucks, but like... Even someone like Romero, who had some success, he still struggled with. Yeah, just some, trying. Sometimes to, when you have a budget, yeah, you can't fully realize your vision. But then it it's ha- like, it but sometimes, with, uh, go ahead. With George Lucas on the original trilogy, yeah, like for Empire. Okay, for Star Wars, he thought the like, movie was absolute shit when he was done. He was like, "This sucks." Like, oh no, <laughs> no, like with with the first Star Wars movie, everyone around him thought it was shit. He was like. He was determined to get the movie done. Like George Lucas, like he was like going from one set to the other. He was like actually riding his bike, bicycling. Well, I mean, let me from... fix that. He thought it was shit after the fact. That's why he had to go and fix everything. <laughs> yeah, like when it when it came when all the footage was done, he edited it. It was shit. So he had to fire the editor, so he could do it his way. He. he uh, he needed music too. He was missing the music part, and then he went up to John Williams, and John Williams made a fantastic score that everyone knows and loves to this day. Yeah, the, there's nothing more memorable than the Star Wars theme. And uh, but you know, overall, Star Wars. I think he said something where like the movie only encompassed like thirty percent of his vision or something. Mm-hmm. So like. Yeah, he was kind of under budget, you know, he was, he almost had a heart attack making that movie because the studio was coming down on him, Uh, everyone didn't believe in him, and it became one of the most successful movies ever made. Then you go on to Empire, Empire has a bigger budget, but they, they file for, I don't think they filed for bankruptcy, but they had to get a loan because they were going over budget for Empire. Mm. Uh, Return of the Jedi, I think things were a bit more relaxed. But then, like, years later, when he revisited the prequels, he had he had budgets, you know. He didn't have a studio looking down on him because he had the rights. He didn't have anybody telling him what to do, and he focused solely on CGI. Um, not solely, like, there are some practical elements of the prequels, but, like, with all the CGI elements to it like he did that because it was more comfortable it was more controlled rather than almost getting a heart attack in the middle of the desert or whatever yeah so i mean that's just like an example of even the most successful movies not being fully realized because they're going over budget they have to eventually cut costs sometimes like what you write doesn't actually show up on screen yeah, and, and it's cool because, you know, with Day of the Dead, Romero still, like, had, you know, a great piece of work there. And to this day, like I said, it's really great. Um, that guy who gets ripped apart is one of the biggest assholes How do you in, uh, in, in the fucking, uh, in 
probably in, in one of George R. Romero's movies. I mean, he's like the biggest prick. Um, I've, I've seen like that scene. I've seen scenes from the movie where yeah. he's just like yelling choke on it. Yeah, choke on him. Choke on him. Yeah. Um, yeah, that and, I mean, well, the thing is, is he's, uh, it's, uh, I forget the fuck, uh, the actor's name, but, it, uh, I think it's, like, Joseph something, but, uh, he plays Rhodes, and that's who we're talking about, and Rhodes is, a uh, fucking, he's the, he's kind of like the, the military guy that's going crazy, and, but he's, like, pretty much trying to be in charge and saying that the scientist is wasting the time their time but the scientist is working on bub and the, <coughs> the scientist is finally making progress uh with bub and obviously he does because we see that later but it's just, it's so good i mean it's just you could go watch it if you haven't seen it. anyone who's listening me and you gotta watch it richard because it's great it's phenomenal yeah. i even get jenny in on it too but she never answers so <laughs> But I will figure it out. But, yeah. okay. So, yes. That's how, I mean, ending it, they could do whatever the hell they want. I think we'll be satisfied with the outcome, you know? Definitely. Um, just because at this point it needs to just end. Uh, and his last question. And then we have uh, we have some on Twitter. And then we also have one on PSN, which i got to boot up my PS4 to see. Um, because I do not have it down. Uh, okay. So his last question is: uh, Do you think they will add a restroom to the RPD in Resident Evil Two Remake? Yes. They might. They should. It would make sense. I mean, they need to. First game. How is there no? How is there no bathroom in the RPD? I don't understand, man. How does that work? Disgusting, like bloody bathrooms make for great settings in horror games. Yeah, dark, like the lights flickering, like you know. Mm-hmm. You can have like a zombie in one of the stalls. This is perfect. Um, but thank you, Bob. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so our buddy Kurt Richard, who actually did have a Santa Claus hat on his picture with Barry. Which is awesome. Um, he asks, should Capcom adapt some of the original stories such as Caliban Cove, Underworld, Degeneration, and Damnation as video games? Ooh, Caliban Cove would be interesting. Um, so would mm. Underworld. Because that's those are like very old old style kind of different kind of storytelling for Resident Evil. Didn't Caliban Cove take place underwater it was like on an island and it was yeah it was like in like it was rebecca and like her team it was kind of crazy i remember reading it and then being very like confused um wasn't barry in that uh yeah i think he was well barry was in underworld too so is leon i think like her her <laughs> original novels always combined characters yeah one of the things it's very interesting though. I remember. I mean, like, that's a good question. Though. I read through like, I read through all of them. But when I was reading through Caliban Cove, the beginning part was really interesting because they go to Barry's apartment, I think, or Barry's house. Yeah. Or maybe it was Cruton. I think it was Barry. And it's like you have all these characters from the first game, and they're meeting up, and they're just talking about what's going on, yeah. what they're gonna do, what they're planning. So I. Yeah, they're planning out like the pretty much what they're trying to do with this the story. Yeah, and you never and, uh, you never uh, like see that in the actual video games. No, no, like, SD Perry did a great fucking job. I think like I love I, the I like stories. seeing those characters like in a more comfortable environment, like their house or like their day to day life. Like I remember in the first book, like they were like telling jokes at the RPD, and Wesker was like leaning back in his chair, laughing at something Chris told him, and. Yeah. The others were just talking. It's just stuff you never see. Uh, yeah, I would like to see a Resident Evil movie with just like a Resident Evil character's everyday life. I don't like, care. And then you have Jill. She was like rushing to the, you know, uh, I think it was three. She has like coffee and then she like drops her keys in her coffee because she's like rushing to like the the uh, the uh, 
police, the RPD's like office. And she's like rushing. And she tries to unlock the door. She drops the keys in her coffee. She's like, great. Like, yeah. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah. Like just shit like that. Like, I don't know. The de- or, like she wrote them so well. Uh, we gotta do a podcast just talking about the novels. I feel like we still have to do that one day. Um, I'd have to reread them because it's been like four years. So yeah, maybe that'll be our project to do in the next few months to reread them. I mean, I like, read them pretty fast. They're really good. Um, but no, I mean, uh, that's a good question, Kurt. I mean, they would de- that'd be awesome to see them in a new light again. It's just a shame that they, you know, they wouldn't do it. But I'd say, yeah, do like Calvin Cove or uh, Underworld or yeah, even even the animated film. I mean, the animated films as games would possibly be like, you know, more action oriented or well, if anything, Damnation would be. But D Generation would be interesting in an airport. Just make it an airport, and you know, there's a lot of stuff you could do with that. But I, I gotta go with the original stories too. So, uh, Callum and Co would be awesome too. Like being Rebecca, playing her as the main character on the island. Like Barry could be like a co-op partner or something like that. That would be so fucking awesome. So, um, but that's that question. Now I'm gonna turn on my PS4, and I'm just gonna get this question real quick. Hang on one second. Last question. And this question is by uh, Persian Wesker. He said, what's up, man? He said, if you do another Let's Talk Resident Evil, could you answer my question? He said, how would you feel about a Resident Evil game that was exclusively about Wesker and the early life in Umbrella? And he said, take care, man. Thank you. Um... That would be interesting. Uh, that would be cool. Like, imagine if, like, a company like Telltale had a hold of the game. Yeah. And they did, like, a Resident Evil origin story. And you can, like... Very story-driven, episodic. You could play, like, as Wesker in the lab and making dis- decisions with conversations back and forth from Birkin. Like... That would be awesome. But... I mean, yeah, that, I mean, the gate, that was pets, like maybe like Wesker went on some kind of like crazy ass mission that we didn't know about. And then there's like some like BOWs there, or, like, you know, that you would have to like make a game out of. But that would be cool if like, if it was really more story driven and to cover the origins of some of the stuff that we've seen, that would be awesome. I agree. Because I remember we mentioned how RE7, you know, back in the day, we were like, what if it took George Trevor's place? What if it was a prequel going back to the beginning? Yeah. You know? And that would be something really interesting if they explored with that a little bit more. So what they could, know? what would be cool is if they made someone like Telltale picked up that story and they combined both the George Trevor aspects and the Albert Wesker yeah kind of thing and if they did it in multiple seasons season one would be about george trevor in the 60s so maybe you're playing as george and you're like talking mm-hmm. to all the different umbrella execs and you get to know like everybody there Jim, and you're like... yeah and you have uh, spencer in his prime because he's really young and you're talking yeah. to him you're talking to james marcus you're talking to i think was it Alexander Ashford, who was... I think so. I think Al- Alexander was the dad of Alexia, but Alexander also had a dad. Yeah. It might have been Edward. I don't remember. Dad of a dad. It was one of the Ashfords. But, like, they founded the corporation, so it would be cool to, like, play as this normal guy, you know, someone who's not a psychopath. Yeah. And like you go home, you talk to your wife, you talk to your daughter Lisa. Yeah. But like, you have that emotion. And it would be a different like it would be a different form of gameplay. It would. You know it mean? would cuz it, it would be like the same setting cuz it's in the mansion, but it would feel so different cuz it's a adventure game. So you have those emotional moments with talking to George's family. You have those like intense moments talking with all the psychopathic umbrella people you can see like how certain bow's are created maybe like some people were kidnapped and then they were like painfully mutated into being hunters and chimera and whatnot Mm -hmm. and then 
at the end of season one, George dies. It's very tragic. It's sad. Later seasons, like season two, deal with Albert Wesker. Maybe he... This is, like, in the 70s and 80s when he's forming, like, a... Not a rivalry, but he's forming, like, a friendship with William Birkin. Yeah. And they're listening to Spencer. They assassinate James Marcus. James Marcus. You know, they become researchers at the Arklay Mountains. There's a lot of opportunities to create, like... That just sounds so cool, man. Yeah. There's just a lot of stuff we could do with that. Make it happen. Make it, Capcom, make it happen. Capcom, go listen to this. Make it happen. Make it happen. Please. That was a really good question, though. I like that. I like that. I like that. that was pretty, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's what they would have to do, is, like, focus on that aspect of Wesker's origin story and then just also wrap it in with the other characters as well that he was solely interacting with at that time. You could also include um, a story about Jake's mom. Oh yeah. So like True. maybe have maybe show things from her perspective. She falls in love with a narcissist and cuz Wesker doesn't give a shit about her well-being. Yeah. So like maybe see like how his departure has an effect on her life and leaving her pregnant. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be an asshole. Oh. I think we might be thinking too deep into this because it's, <laughs> it's something that would never happen. But but it's just something we want to, you know, it's just fun. It's people like listening to the, yeah. to the stuff that might never be. But thank you all for your questions. Those are all the questions. Um, again, I didn't do a video this time, but we still got a decent amount of questions. And we're at about two and a half hours, so I think it's about time to wrap it up. We did cover all the current news. Uh, we talked about all the stuff that is RE7. Um, obviously, there's a, like a bunch of trailers and mini trailers that came out, but we kind of summed it all up here, uh, as well as you know we watched them all, so we were able to kind of get an idea. Um, thank you, Richard, for coming on. Uh, this was really fun. I had a really good time. Thank you for having me. Just doing an old, yeah, doing an old school episode and. Uh, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff uh, together soon. Um, maybe even some Resident Evil Mercenaries videos. You never know. We'll come up with some stuff. Um, so we'll kind of just take it from there. But thank you for listening. Again, you can download this episode on Mediafire. That Mediafire link down below. Also, you can like the Let's Talk Resident Evil Facebook page, which is just facebook.com slash Let's Talk Resident Evil. And Richard, why don't you plug your new channel? It's under a new name, a new handle, so you might as well just plug that for anyone who wants to check out your current Let's Play mm -hmm. and also future Resident Evil content. Yeah, so it's not a new channel, but it is a it's a new but familiar name. It's Biohazard Triple Eight Three Eights. Um, currently doing an RE One Let's Play on Chris, so if you want to check out. The first few parts of that, and then you might click that link. Any of my older videos, click that link, check it out. Uh, any collab videos that Anthony and I will do will probably be going on his channel, so stay tuned for those. And yeah, so there's going to be a lot of a lot of good stuff then. Yeah. So the next time we come back, we'll, pr we'll probably be after RE Seven, after we give our opinions, we'll we'll talk about the game itself, because um, that will be a show. That would be very interesting because we'll pretty much have our opinions out on the table. So look forward to that. So happy gaming, everyone, for that RE7. And stay tuned for all the content. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for the downloads. Thanks for all the comments. Let us know uh, what you want to hear next in the next episode of the podcast. Any, any other topics that you might want to hear within the RE7 video. Let us know. That's it, guys. Catch you in the next one. Have a good one.